Hey guys, I'm troubleshooting my 20X122 set right now. If you recall, I finished recapping it and went through a preliminary power up, and voltages all seem to check out okay, or at least all the voltages I've checked so far. But we have no sound, we have no picture. Well, the first thing I did was to check the horizontal oscillator. I found some waveforms and rider service info and I did a little bit of twiddling on one of the coils on the horizontal oscillator and I actually got it to look just like those waveforms are supposed to. A quick way you can also check to see that the horizontal circuit's running is to just take your scope probe and just lie it on top of the yoke just to make sure you stay clear of the high voltage lead and you can actually pick up a signal. And then I can check the frequency, and right around, lock. Oh yeah, it's right around 15.7 or so kilohertz, like it's supposed to be. So, that got me thinking, well, horizontal oscillator seems to be running. So how come we have no picture? Well, next up I check the high voltage. Oh yeah, we've got high voltage. Right around 10,000 volts, 9,000 volts, like it's supposed to be. So, why no picture? Well, it could be a few things. One, the biasing on the grid could be totally off and it's cutting off the emissions from the tube. So let's see, on this set, let's focus and it's the brightness and contrast. And they don't seem to be doing anything. So I gotta check the voltages on those. But there is another possibility. These test CRTs uh, don't require uh, an ion trap, so there's no problem with that fooling around with the magnet back here. But they're also auto-focusing, meaning you don't need this focus electromagnet. You don't need to fool with this focus control. Well, I have seen on some other sets that when you have the focus magnet, hooked up and energized it actually shoves the electron beam so it's off the screen you don't get a glow I think the quickest way for me to test that is to actually pop this out and reinstall a 10 BP4 picture tube uh, otherwise you could unmount the focus coil and light on the side some sets you can also disconnect it others you can't because it actually uh, it's usually involved in the power supply to some extent, and if you remove it, the set's not going to operate properly. I had to heat up the yoke to get this inserted, but... Turn that off before I shock myself. But uh, it's fairly loose, so I think I can get this out without too much trouble. Get the 10 BP4 installed. Okay, I got the 10 BP4 installed. And now I will have to fool around with an ion trap magnet. So, I don't expect to see anything at first, even if it is working, until I fool around with that. It's weird as I'm moving the magnet and getting sound out of the speaker. There was a loose connection somewhere. I'm not getting any light out of this picture too. So maybe it is a problem with bias. I do believe I found a problem, or at least one of the problems. I went to measure the voltage on, let's see, pin 10 on the CRT, which goes around and around and attaches to actually one side of the uh, vertical output transformer, that uh, the red mark there on that transformer. Well, I measured that voltage and I got a whopping zero volts. 
like that is this down here. These two red wires come in together on this capacitor terminal. Well, I traced the wiring and it didn't make much sense to me. To get run one, one red wire goes right to this output transformer here. This guy, vertical output transformer. And the other red wire goes right to the CRT pin. There's no other connections. So, <laughs> it seemed to me that if it's supposed to be over 100 volts, uh, there better be another connection there to actually get those get that voltage into it. Well, turns out that I am missing a T resistor. On the schematic. Right here, R77. 1500 ohm resistor right there. Which would tie that point down onto one side of the flyback. And that's where the voltage comes through. I refer to the SAMs which shows you where all the resistors are supposed to be and there it is R77 going right to that capacitor terminal on the other side it's obscured by this capacitor but I did some poking around and it is the second terminal from the right right here so from here over to here should be a 1500 ohm resistor so I'm going to dig one out solder it in and see what happens all right, here goes. All right, here goes. Six volts. Let's see. Voltage charts. Four hundred volts. That's what it's supposed to be on. We're a little bit high, but not too bad. Up. I may uh, need to adjust the uh, focus electromagnet. Not sure if this is the magnet that came with this set or not. Try using this one, see if it works any better. I loosened up that thumb screw, which allows you to manipulate the yoke, and I pushed it up tight against the bell of the CRT. It, there was about a half inch gap before, which is why I had that shadow on the side of the picture. And then I manipulated these set screws back here where you see those springs, which allows you to manipulate that focus coil, which is how you center the picture. And now I've got this. Still no picture, still no sound, but it's a decent raster. What I'm going to try doing next is I'm going to fire my B&K 1077 and start injecting some signals directly into the IF strip. 
it's got to be something wrong between the antenna input and <laughs> all this stuff because we've got no picture and no sound. The first thing I'm doing is I'm injecting a signal right at the tuner output. It's a little wire coming out down there. I just clip the uh, alligator lead, which is the output of the 1077, right on there. And I put the 1077 into IF mode. And uh, I've got it dialed into around 25 megahertz, which is the IF this uses. And how about that? A picture. Right. And these. I almost got a lock. Boy, that sink is really touchy. This set uses a couple 12 AU7s. The one down there is the sink separator. And the one over here is vertical output. Well, I swapped those two, thinking maybe one of them's bad, and I noticed that the one on the sink circuit was cold. Um, so I went ahead and swapped them, thinking, hey, maybe one's bad. And this tube I know is good because the vertical is working, and uh, and it is now with the other tube in there. So I think both of them are good. However, it's not glowing, so uh, it seems like the filaments not getting to it or uh, maybe there's a bad connection on the socket I can see the filament wire there it's a black wire um, and it seems to be wired right in this brown big fat brown wire right here is the filament goes to this terminal strip and then right to the socket so not sure what's going on there Something else I did was I swapped out the 6J6, which is the oscillator mixer tube on the tuner. And let's see if that makes any difference. Still got the B and K injected. So I'll take that out. Hey! <laughs> I guess that was the problem. local over the area, channel 6, I mean local over the air station. So, seems like the last big remaining task is to figure out what is going on with this sync circuit. The problem with the sink tube turned out to be a dirty socket pin. So now I've got a synchronized picture. But it's not very good. Uh, so I imagine it will benefit from an alignment. And I also need to go through and check all the tubes. I could have some weak 6AU6 tubes. There's a whole bunch of them used in the IF circuits. I tested all the tubes and found a bad 6AG5 that's used as the RF front end and one of the 12AU7s was a bit weak so I replaced that uh, but the rest tested okay and uh, now I've got definitely got a sharper picture and the sink is fine but there's one really odd thing controls down here are brightness and contrast and the contrast works just fine. You get really harsh contrast and you back it off. But the brightness is really funky. For about two thirds of the control rotation, you get a completely black picture. And then there's a very small range where you get some useful control. And if you keep going, 
it gets really large and then it kind of blooms out and completely loses focus. And I'm also getting, uh, it flashes occasionally, the picture will like get bigger and then shrink back down. Like that. So not only does this change the brightness, but it also seems to have quite an impact on the focus. Like right now, it's just completely blurred out and I can't focus it at all. So there's some weirdness here. That's a little strange because it's a very simple brightness control. Just a potentiometer between ground and a couple hundred volts and it goes to one pin on the CRT. Uh, I don't see how there's a whole lot that can go wrong there. Unless maybe the uh, control's bad or dirty. Let's see, uh, there it is. So there's a filter cap to ground. Got a pot going between ground and uh, B, the B plus rail with a 100k dropping resistor in series and then it just goes to pin 2 on the CRT so can't be too difficult to track down what's going on hopefully it's just a uh, dirty controller or a dirty connection somewhere I found that the 100k resistor in series with the control pot was actually measuring about 170k Somehow I missed this one when I was testing the resistors. But also, something else. Originally that resistor was connected to the junction of these two power resistors. But that's not what they show in the schematic. The schematic shows it being attached to this end here. So that's what I've done. Let's see what kind of difference that makes. Well, unfortunately, that actually made things worse. <laughs> so, I'll have to do some more investigating. So, when you're fully clockwise, it actually gets dimmer and just completely blooms out. And for about two thirds of the travel, the picture's completely dark. I reviewed the service info that Riders put out, which you can download freely from the Early Television Foundation for this chassis, and they have a section on troubleshooting, and they list a couple pages of symptoms, possible causes, and possible solutions. One of which happened to be if the picture blooms when you adjust the brightness control, and they suggested two possibilities. One is the picture tube could be bad, of which I'm eliminating by going back to my test CRT, which I know is good. Two, there is actually a resistor buried inside the high voltage cage on this output tube, or rather on the uh, rectifier tube. And that is on the schematic here. Now this schematic shows a 1 meg resistor. However, other versions they showed a 470k, and that's what's installed in this set. Ah, uh, yeah, like this, this schematic is 470k. So I thought I'd pop the high voltage cage open and test it. And what did I find? Well, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Other than it sure seems to be bad. I say I'm not sure because I'm having trouble actually reading it. A moment ago, I tested it with my digital multimeter and it was measuring about half a meg. Uh, and then I switched to using my VTVM, which I fired up because I want to do some other testing that requires using the VTVM. And just to double check, I thought I would check it with this. And this gave me really weird readings, like I'm on the 1 mega ohm scale, which is the top scale there, and it's got a reading of 30, meaning 30 mega ohms. Well, that sure doesn't sound right. So then I flip back to the digital multimeter, and now I don't measure anything on it. Now, I did have this set fired up a while ago, and even though I discharged the uh, pitcher tube, there could be some re residual charge in this area. Maybe that was throwing my multimeter off. 
I'll hook it back up and test it one more time. Regardless, I'm certainly going to sw swap out this resistor for an, a new good one. It's just weird because I've never seen a resistor measure all funky like that. Yeah, look closer though. It does look a bit fried. At first, actually, I thought it was a 470 ohm because that it's yellow. It should be yellow, purple, yellow, but that third band looks more smell like brown. I think is the resistor uh, overheated a bit. So I'm trying to measure this one-handed with my multimeter. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, that's what I was getting a moment ago. It's not. It's infinite. There's no reading whatsoever on this resistor. Now, obviously, it must have been conducting to some extent because we did get an image on the picture. But uh, high voltage can do weird things. So there could be some strange carbon traces that are burned through this resistor. So uh, let's swap that out for a good one and keep my fingers crossed. I installed a new 470K resistor. I'm going to test that okay. Here's the old one. I tried measuring it again and uh, essentially it measures open. It's well into the tens of mega ohms if I can get any reading at all. Here goes. So with that bad resistor in there, what was happening is it was the in show, series and you'd listen to fix, <laughs> with this high voltage line and it was essentially starving the picture tube of high voltage. I can already tell it's a lot better, much brighter. Now remember what I mentioned about that focus coil reacting badly with these test picture tubes? No, that's why it's blurry. But I'm not worried about that. I'm more concerned with the brightness control working correctly. So that's the best focusing I'm possibly going to get with the what way the set is set up. Alright, so. Ah, uh, much better. So I got the brightness up all the way. I'm going through the whole travel here. And it's not blooming and getting all crazy. And you know, remember that flashing before it was getting bright and then dim again and bright. That was probably as high voltage was arcing through that resistor. So hopefully that won't happen anymore. This is the contrast control. Uh, much better. Before when I would turn the contrast down low, the picture would just fade out to nothing. Alright. Much, much better. Alright, I'm going to let this play for a while, make sure there aren't any more problems that crop up. And then I think I will move on to all those fine tweaks and adjustments with the test pattern and the alignment and so on. All right, the set's been playing great for about half an hour now, so I think all the major obstacles have been overcome, except for one, which is a little self-created, and I one of you in your comments were was concerned about me damaging the neck on this test picture tube, or the uh, full-size picture tube when I was taking it in and out because of the way the yoke shrunk. Well, guess what? I damaged the picture tube, uh, but it didn't break. I just ripped the base off of it. Oh, it's around there somewhere. Here we go. So, when I was pulling this out, even with the yoke heated up and somewhat pliable, the lip of this must have caught somewhere inside there and just ripped off. Might have been loose to begin with. I don't recall checking. So I will have to glue that on. First thing I want to do is clean up the pins on this. You can see there's a little pinhole at the end of each one. That's where the lead had been coming through. I'm going to take some solder wick and soldering iron and clean those uh, holes up a little bit. I've just got some cheapo solder wick, nothing special. And my trusty Weller soldering iron. And then simply put some of the wick over the end of the pin. Heat up the other side, and so we'll draw all the solder out.
Alright. So, I think you get the idea there. Now to actually put it back on. If I'm real lucky, I can kind of feel <laughs> my way around and get all five to thread back through those pins. It's unlikely I'm going to be able to. So instead, what I'm going to do is take some thin copper wire. So, and solder a length of it to the end of each pin. That will give me something a lot easier to thread through that base. There we go. Like so. So it's just barely hanging on there, but that'll be enough. Now what these wires will help me to do is to guide them through the base. Like so. And of course I need to do the others. Once I do, be able to slide the base down all the way and solder those pins back on. And then of course glue the base on too. And for that I will use good old Primatex Flobo silicone windshield and glass sealer. Originally they used this stuff that's kind of like a real early primitive type of epoxy. Most of this is still here and it's in good shape, which is great because this will provide a decent base for that permatex to sit on between this big light base and the glass. Success! However, before I can solder these off, I need to back this off a little bit and get some adhesive in there. Alright, I glued the base down, making careful that it was centered. And now I can get all these guys off. And solder those pins in. What I do is I heat up the side of the pin and then feed the solder down into the center. Alright, I will let that adhesive set up and hopefully this picture too will be as good as new. I hooked the picture tube up to my Suncor CR70 and indeed it is testing quite good. Also found out that if you have this powered up while the glue is still tacky, the heat from the <laughs> filament will actually help it set up a lot faster. Usually it takes a few hours or overnight and this has only been on for uh, about an hour. It's on there quite solid. <laughs>